It's dirty, it's rough around the edges, but it's a big surprise. This is the new North Face Eminus, a casual trail shoe that would probably slip under most of your radars, but undoubtedly deserves so much more attention. The fact that it's marketed as a hiking and trail combo shoe does it a disservice as it's quickly become one of my favorite trail running shoes of 2022. So starting at the top, the flexible mesh upper, 3D printed toe protection, and thicker ankle materials feel like proper North Face evolution from last year's Vectiv line. The midsole is super bouncy and far more cushioned than I expected. The outsole though, that's the real standout. Some serious grip from such simple, shallow lugs made of North Face's new surface control rubber. This shoe is surprisingly fun, but it isn't without its critiques. The Eminus sits at the bottom of the North Face trail line in price, but can it compete against those pricier offerings or against other brands' trail shoes? A lot to cover in today's review. Let's dive in. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another Ginger Runner review. First, happy 4th of July. It's the July extravaganza. A couple of reviews dropping today. Hope you enjoy them. The trail tested video that I dropped a couple weeks ago, it seems many of you really enjoy that. Good news. I've got many more episodes coming up with that. Uh, it is a fun new series. I really enjoyed making it. If you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. But today's review, the one you're watching right now, is of a shoe that I'm actually really excited about. It really flew under my radar. As soon as I got it, I was like, I don't know. But now that I've tested it, put nearly 80 miles in it, I am excited. From North Face, it is the Vectiv Eminus. Eminus. Takes a couple times once you get it right. Stuck. Now, of course, before I dive into the review, I have to point out that these shoes were provided for review by the North Face. I'm under no obligation to say anything positive or negative about them. I'm not financially compensated for anything that I say in this review. All opinions are my own. No one has to approve it. You're the first to see it. With that said, pat yourself on the back, tip of the hat, let's dive in. I like to talk about the things I like and dislike about every product I uh, review. We're gonna start with things that I like. Let's go. Weird place to start, but the grip. I'm not kidding. This surface control rubber, whether North Face has used it in other products in the past. I don't remember ever having an outsole on a North Face shoe that has nearly this much grip. I love this rubber. That is weird to say. I've talked about Vibram, Vibram Light Base, all sorts of different rubber compounds on this channel in the past on other shoes, rubbers that work well, that don't. Surface control is fantastic. Uh, I really have put it through the test. Wet conditions, snowy conditions, super muddy conditions, and despite the fact that the lugs aren't super deep, uh, these shoes haven't lost grip. And I've tested them on wet logs, wet roots, wet rocks, things that have that thin layer of grime that's very slippery. And man, they just, they grip. It's like they're using a climbing shoe rubber or something. Um, and then on top of that, it's holding up really well too. So not only is it super sticky and tacky in all conditions, but it's holding up quite well. So the outsole and the grip of the shoe, even though it's at the bottom of the North Face line in price, really stand out. It's fantastic very unexpected midsole so this eva that they're using in this shoe it's a full eva but they do have a bit of vective plating here under the forefoot it's very thin tpu plate uh, you can barely feel it. it provides a little bit of protection but honestly it's the eva that's both flexible it's bouncy they call it really responsive i'm not getting a big responsive vibe out of it this thing is super good for just casual days out in the mountains where pace isn't of a concern where you just kind of want to lollygag and get your long miles it's great for ultra i can picture this really working well at the 50k distance plus uh i just did 16 miles in it today it's a bit dusty and sweaty but the reality is now having about 80 miles in the shoe still being able to put long miles on it it's holding up great i love this midsole slipper like so the shoe is, as I mentioned, very flexible. It doesn't have a lot going on. It's very simple. But what I love is that this upper is very stretchy. It's very comfortable. And the more you break this shoe in, which for me took about 20 to 30 miles, the more the shoe just sort of becomes one with your foot. Uh, unlike last year's Vective models, which were at the top of my list for some of my favorite trail running shoes, this doesn't feel like any of those, which had much more structure around the fit and the body of the shoe. This just feels much more casual. So I can see it being marketed more as that hiking shoe, but the reality is it works incredibly well as a trail running shoe. So I don't need all that structure that inhibits my foot. We have it right where we need it. So some extra build around the ankle and the heel, some extra build here through the lacing so you can get a good tight lock. But the reality is that the forefoot is super flexible, good for those who want a bit more room and accommodating fit, 
Um, and it just makes for an overall shoe that fits like a slipper, something you could wear casually, walking around, hiking around, but then just break into a run and be right at home. That being said, it's not all backyard barbecues with coolers full of ice cold cervezas or a lazy afternoon sitting on a pool floaty drinking your margaritas. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the North Face Vective Eminus. Let's get to those now. Stability. Now this is probably my biggest gripe with the Eminus. It is not a deal breaker. I'll get to that in a little bit, uh, but it's certainly something I noticed right out of the box. What I'm finding is that the shoe itself wants to lean to the lateral side through your gait. And that is because of an additional amount of midsole material through the arch of the foot. As soon as you put your foot in there, you'll notice that the arch of this foot feels like it has a bit of a ball kind of underneath there. Uh, as you run, that goes away. You get used to it and you begin to strike uh, under your midfoot and forefoot. So you don't spend a lot of time under that arch. Uh, but if you're just standing still or carving out turns on single track, you'll notice that the shoes sort of want to lean to that lateral side. It's very similar to the Speed Goat 1. Uh, one of my problems with that shoe was that it felt a little unstable underfoot because it wanted to lean out. While it is certainly something I noticed and bugged me, it did not take away from my joy that I felt in this shoe purely because I spend more time striking under the midfoot and forefoot while I'm trail running in the shoe. So I didn't spend a lot of time on that larger amount of midsole through the arch of the foot. Um, I noticed it, I have to point it out. So it does sort of want to lean you onto the lateral side of your gait. Durability. As I mentioned, the shoe is very slipper-like. And I think that's because as the shoe breaks in, it does become kind of second nature with your foot. It becomes very flexible in all directions. What that has me doing is worrying about the overall durability of the shoe because materials uh, are, are beginning to break down a little bit. I have put plenty of miles in the shoe and it's still holding up fine. I know I'll get at least another 100, 120 miles out of the shoe, uh, but it is certainly something I wanted to point out. My concern for durability is elevated with this shoe. Not so much the outsole. Outsole's still doing really good, um, really with the upper materials. So have to point it out, but that's it for dislike. So let's get a bit more specific in our breakdown where we talk about build quality, comfort, fit, price, and look, starting with build quality. So I do like what they're using here uh, material-wise. Because the shoe really breaks in, it does feel very comfortable underfoot as you run more miles in it. Uh, that does lead to a potential for breakdown, premature breakdown where some of the materials may not last as long as I'd hoped. So the build quality is both a positive and a negative. Comfort, it's a very comfortable shoe. While they're marketing it as a hiking trail running shoe, it is so comfortable. I, I just really, really love it. It is not what I expected. I was kind of expecting something more rigid and stiffer, what we're getting in the rest of the Vective line, but it just, man, it's just different. It holds up quite well. Um, so overall, quite comfortable. Fit, I'm noticing now with a lot of miles in the shoe that the fit is becoming a little less dialed. Some of these upper materials is reinforced. Uh, uh, materials are stretching out a bit. It's totally fine, getting a good fit. Those of you who want more volume in the forefoot, you're gonna get it. Heel lock is good, fits fine. Price, the shoe comes in at about 128 bucks. I actually don't mind that price point. I think you're getting a shoe that will feel different than many shoes that are out there. Uh, it, it, it's just very simple. It's very comfortable, and I think it will do a lot of people a lot of good. So at that price point, I think it becomes a bit more approachable versus those 150, 170, 190, 200 plus dollar shoes. Frick, there's so many that are more than that now. So $128, you know, five years ago, I'd be like, that's expensive. Um, I think it works quite well here. And finally, looks. I actually really like the looks of the shoe. If you get a good close up look here, You'll notice that it has like yellow speckles in the midsoles, turquoise ankles, some orange lace things, outsoles orange and then gray and black. Uh, overall, the shoe reminds me kind of like a 90s kid's shoe that just needs some Velcro straps over it. Um, I'm drawn to that. I think it's a pretty damn good looking shoe, super fun. Uh, yeah, I don't mind it. If anything, I dig it. Bringing us finally to our conclusion. This shoe, it just makes me happy. Uh, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, doesn't have the carbon plate, doesn't have all this extra foam to give you that max cushion over long distance. It just does so much so simply so well, and it, it is at an approachable price point for many people. I think uh, this shoe should definitely be on your list. For me, the price is right, the ride is tight, the Eminus gives me excite. Oh boy, yeah, it's a good shoe. Bringing us to our final criteria. Is the Vectiv Eminus a buy, try, or a why? As you can probably tell, this is a solid buy, uh, no doubt about it. 
Um, I'm having a lot of fun in this shoe. I think you'll have a lot of fun in it. I definitely have lots of miles in it and we'll get many, many more. This is one of those shoes I'm gonna keep in my rotation throughout the summer. Uh, it does make for a really fun summer shoe and that grip is fantastic. So it might even work well into the fall months as well. Um, so check it out. And that is it for today's review. Uh, if you would like to get a pair of the Vective Eminis, or if you would like to find out more information, I have links to Running Warehouse in the description as well as in this video. Uh, use them, it helps the channel out. It costs you nothing, but it does take you over to Running Warehouse and you can get all your questions answered and all that good stuff. If you are a GR crew member, you also get some additional discounts on Running Warehouse. So go use that coupon. You know how to do that. But that's it for today's review. Hope you liked it. If you did, make sure you like, favorite, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, all that good stuff, social media, everything else. But finally, uh, join the GR crew. We would love to have you join our amazing community of global runners that are going through the same things that you're going through, training for some of the same races that you might be training for with some of the same goals. It is an amazingly uh, supportive community. We would love for you to join. Head on over to patreon.com slash the ginger runner. All tiers get really great perks and we do daily live streams and we talk about gear regularly. We do unboxings. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun stuff and we would love to have you join the crew. Finally, long sleeve shirts, last call for those before they run out. There are links both in the description. There is the merch shelf below this video and there is also a link in this video as well. So use them, grab these shirts. They're amazing. I've got one on my wall. Do you want that one? You can have it. I think it smells. I don't think you want it. Thanks all. We hope you're getting out there training hard, racing harder and partying to the hardest. Happy weekend to you. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>